It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Hey, what's up guys? While I'm, while I'm letting my GPS sync, I um, am setting up the seat for the, my ride, my new range test ride. Okay, so this strap is just to keep it from staying on in an emergency. It doesn't really do much to, to um, secure it. Your weight is basically what is gonna secure it here. I did wanna show that you can see in there, my saddle screws look different. That's because I have put different ones on there. I went to Home Depot and bought some M4 0.7 thread, 16 millimeter long screws. I got little small washers as well, and uh, they fit perfectly. They, uh, they're nice and tight. The, the uh, Allen wrench that they include with a wheel fits them perfectly. So until I get new screws from InMotion, I'm gonna be using those. Okay, I'm just waiting for my wrist mounted GPS to get lock here because uh, I'm, I'm using the same parameters as last time when I did the range test on the pre-production model I'm going to be going about 20 miles an hour 18 to 20 and um, but I'm going to be backing up with the GPS but I do have the iOS app running uh, the InMotion iOS app running as well to track other vital stats okay so with um, with the increased range of motion with the pedals, the clearance with the suspension, the standing height of the, the suspension is definitely higher. I just, I, I just tried to mount the first time, not paying attention, my body being used to the height of other wheels. And um, I, <laughs> I didn't bring my other foot up high enough and I almost dumped the wheel on the driveway. I just caught it just before it dumped. So, Pretty close. All right, there we go. All right, we got GPS lock. So we're on our way. Here we go. Okay, we are on the road and rolling. And I'm already going too fast. I'm already going 23 miles an hour without thinking about it. All right, so we gotta dial things back. I am glad to have a seat for this range test because uh, my left knee is still problematic, unfortunately, still painful. I would say it's making uh, very, very tiny incremental improvements day to day. And uh, hopefully I don't do anything that uh, retards my, my healing. Like yesterday I was, I did, a, I worked all day just doing various shit, including uh, changing the screen, uh, ripped screen on the, on the uh, lanai which required me to be down on my knees uh, in an uncomfortable position, but my knee doesn't feel uh, significantly worse today. It's not too bad, so we'll see how it goes. So when I rode this the first couple of nights, it felt like the, um, the wheel had a slight down tilt to it. Cool thing about the InMotion uh, app is you can actually go in there and you can change the, Jesus Christ, you can change the, uh, the pedal angle in the app by one degree at a time. So I actually changed it to minus five degrees, which actually looked flat to me. So it'll be interesting to see how the pedals feel now. And this person here that you see going by in this truck with no hood and Confederate flag, <laughs> he came screaming up to the, uh, the, the uh, road here like he was gonna roll right through as I approached. Uh, luckily, my, with my high visibility vest, <laughs> And the stink eye that I shot him, even though I don't know that he could see, uh, he did He did manage to stop before rolling into my path. Man, 23, 24 miles an hour feels like nothing on this. Let me tell you, nothing at all. All right, now we're down to about 20. I need to try to stay here. All right, we are accelerating quickly to get through the intersection. 
There we go. Not bad. Had to run the yellow. And it feels like uh, it feels like I need to maybe back off a couple degrees the other way now. My feet feel like they're going up a little bit, just a little bit. But with a, uh, a long ride like this, it's only going to get exacerbated. Okay, actually, I actually made two changes there. I adjusted the pedal angle a little bit more this way, just a little bit. And I switched the pedals from a comfortable mode, I think it's called, to classic. Comfortable mode is a softer mode. And I've, I've always been the one to, to ride in with hard pedals, just what I'm used to, what I'm comfortable with. So I set it to the classic mode, which is the harder pedal setting. So we'll see, I'll mess around with it to see, you know, if one feels better than the other, but we're now in classic. All right, we, we have um, a bit of a headwind going this direction. And as you can see, the, uh, the clouds look a little unsettled. They sort of look like, hey, we're gonna thunderstorm. I would rather not get wet on this uh, range test, but it may be a possibility. I want to give you guys another FYI, and, and again, I'm, I'm telling them myself. I make myself look extremely stupid, but who knows, someone else might make the same mistake as I did. The pump that's included with um, the V11, I'm, I think the S18 was similar. I'm not sure 100% now that, now that I say this, but well, the pump is with the V11. It's a Jiwo pump, G-I-Y-O. The fitting that goes on the Schrader valve, it's a screw-on fitting, and then there's a little lever there. And uh, there's no specific instructions for the, the pump. They're just throw it in the box. And uh, there, there's some very important information regarding that lever that you need to understand, <laughs> or you're not gonna be able to, uh, to fill your wheel accurately. Basically, the way it's designed is um, when the lever is next to the hose, and I'll, I'll put a graphic here that kind of, that, that I found on the internet that, it, that uh, shows you how this works. When the graphic is parallel to the hose, that means that the uh, valve is, is actually closed. What you do is you leave it in that position to screw it on, then you, you pull the valve away, or the lever away from the valve body so it's perpendicular. And what that does when you do that is it pushes a little shoe that actually en engages the Schrader valve so you can add air to the, um, to the cylinder. So the reason they do this is because it's such a, a small displacement in the shocks of air that if you lose a lot of air, or if you're not super quick, when you disconnect the hose, you're, you're, you're dropping you know, 10, 15, 20 PSI, maybe more, who knows? So the way it's supposed to work is you leave the lever down uh, parallel to the hose, you screw it on, you flip it out perpendicular, you pump up the shock, and when it's at the pressure you want, you push that lever back down. And that, will, that again, will disengage the Schrader valve. So in theory, you should have no to very minimal loss when you disconnect the pump. That's the way that works. So again, I did not realize that and who knows what I was doing uh, prior, but I, I'm pretty sure that there might've been times where I thought I was adding air and I actually had it in the position where you can't add air. <laughs> that would not surprise me. So keep that in mind, guys. I mean, I guess my knee has to be doing a little bit better because I'm not getting that throbbing aching sensation in the first few miles uh, that I was getting, you know, when I had the V11 uh, pre-production wheel. So like I said, it's a little bit better, not great. All right, so I am sitting, sort of. It's really more my thighs that are on the, uh, the V11 as opposed to my rear end, but it gets me off my feet for short breaks, that's fine. Right in the headwind. Good news is if this wind stays consistent, on the way back, I should be uh, doing uh, pretty damn good. So we'll see, we'll see how the numbers work out. One other thing that just popped into my head as far as the, the pump and you know, the lever and how that all works. Keep in mind, if you use 
the valve extension to get to those uh, specifically the top the top fill valves you're negating that feature on the pump sort of because no matter what you're doing on the pump when you go to unscrew that valve extension you're going to lose a little bit of psi so keep that in mind if if you want to have the absolute minimum amount of air escape when you're filling these valves you need to have the air pump connection directly connected uh, if you if you are worried about that and i think really the only way you can do that well with the top valves is to actually take the saddle off all the way i've been filling it just by uh, taking off the two two or i'm sorry the four bolts on the, on the saddle on the top that allow me just to kind of push the saddle out of the way but i don't know that i'd be able to use the uh the fitting on the pump directly using that method so just a uh, more pointless information wanted to thank everybody that participated in the uh the live stream on wednesday night it went on for a crazy four and a half hours my longest stream ever a lot of fun though i know it was very unstructured i know there's a lot of random elements to it but it was fun and and, and uh, i think i actually wound up having the largest stream audience i've ever had so that was cool uh, a lot of you liked cindy's participation she was she was basically running the stream by herself for, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour, while I was doing stuff in the background, so it was kind of funny. But yeah, anyways, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Glance down and notice that I've, I've lost my first bar on the battery meter. I'm not sure exactly when that happened. I'm at 8.3 uh, 8, 8 miles right now. Just past the dead coyote by the side of the road, which uh, I guess I'll be passing on the way back. A bunch of buzzards around it. You know, even though uh, I'm, I'm uh, not happy with coyotes, obviously, because of their predatory relationship with my chickens, um, I still don't want to see them dead. I am actually supposed to be receiving my four-foot fence extensions today. I don't know that I'm going to actually begin the installation process today. We've been keeping the chickens mostly sequestered since the, uh, the incident last weekend. You know, they're spending most of their time in their run where they cannot uh, cannot be harmed. Uh, chickens aren't loving it much, but yeah, better confined than dead. That's my theory. All right, I am starting to get rained on lightly right now. I can deal with light rain. I would rather not get soaked though. I forgot to mention, uh, um, yesterday I took one more chicken security uh, measure. I bought a, a battery-powered ring spotlight cam. I have a number of ring devices in the house already. Bought a battery-powered ring spotlight cam that I had mounted on the back corner of the fence. I was a little concerned that it might not have Wi-Fi signal out there, but it actually is able to hook into the Wi-Fi router that I have in the coop itself connects to the Wi-Fi there and gets out to the internet. So it does work. Thought process there is it will keep us aware of activity around that back gate. Oh wow, look at that. That guy doing a pop and a wheelie. All right. Oops, and he's probably doing about 100 miles an hour. That's awesome. So anyway, thought process is um, It'll allow me uh, to get notified whenever motion is detected along that back fence line, which would be beneficial to allow me to know if uh, there's uh, coyotes hanging out back there. Okay, another uh, short seated break. I mean, having to lean this far forward just is you know, not that comfortable, but it does get the weight off my feet at least. I said this before, the issue when you put the monster seat on the V11 is you know, the, the, the back of the handle assembly curves down. So if you, if you get your rear end towards the back, it feels like it's gonna wanna slip off. So that's why you have to keep your, your, your weight forward like that. I assume when Emotion um, releases their seat for the V11, that will not be the case. I'm probably about a mile from the entrance. It's going fine. Just hoping to stay dry. 
I did, um, since my last video, I did go back and add a little bit more pressure to the tire as well. I'm running about 32 PSI, which is, I believe, almost exactly what I was running on the pre-production uh, unit as well. So should be very similar pressure. So I am gonna ride around Ave Maria a little bit to get a little bit extra mileage on it. Uh, the last V11 test, I was actually a half mile short of the distance that I did on the S18. So just gonna ride around a little bit just to get maybe an extra half mile, mile on the wheel. I'm actually heading over here on the sidewalk. Take advantage of uh, some more bumps, you know, a little bumpier than the roadway, so. Just give me some more feedback. It's doing a good job of absorbing like just the, the little tiny undulations here in this path. It really is. There you go. The mandatory church glamour shot of Ave Maria. I've had this person ghosting me from behind for the last five minutes. I'm not sure if they're overly cautious or overly curious. My guess is the latter. Just cruising down the road. Figure to burn up some mileage here. We'll we'll make a left. This is this is the street where Mickey and I did my famous or infamous depending on your <clears throat> point of view speed test on the MSX this is where I reach my fastest speed ever on an EUC of 38.4 miles an hour don't expect to be getting those speeds on the V11 but it does have a posted top speed of 55 kilometers per hour usable in the first 20% of the battery pack so I will definitely try to touch the low 30s on my V11 at some point, just not today. This looks like something straight out of a Hitchcock movie, don't you think? Mickey? <laughs> All right, let's test some of that low speed maneuverability. You know, despite the higher riding position, V11 still does feel quite maneuverable to me. You know, I thought, I thought this was the road that we did the high speed test on. It's not. Uh, there, there's a bunch of roads that lead, lead off into nowhere here at Ave Maria, I guess for future development purposes. Uh, but this actually is not the one I was thinking of. I'll show you the one that I was thinking of. This is the road we did the test on. And we clearly uh, violated the speed limit. Not sure if you can see this on the GoPro in a distance. Those gray vertical lines. That's rain. Potentially hard rain. Uh, not far away rain. Hoping I can uh, circumvent that. Just want to get one little pseudo high speed pass in. Just get a couple curb drops in here. Really eating up that impact, man. My knees love the V11.
Whenever I see a road obstacle that looks like it would be a good suspension demonstration, I try to do it. Okay, let's, um, let's see what the app says as far as battery goes. The on-screen display shows I'm missing two of the five bars, so now, so, so, so far. Jump over here. Okay, this says I have 55% battery remaining, and I'm just under 19 miles right now. So, like I said, that was into a headwind the entire way here. I, I expect to be getting better mileage on the way back. Um, on my first range test, it was the opposite. I got really good mileage here, but on the way back, I got crappy mileage because of headwind. So, let's see. Let's see. No time to waste. Uh, some people find this, this um, information helpful. At 55%, the battery is at 75.7 volts. And just FYI, that little speed run, I, I touched 29.1 miles an hour just doing that little speed run. Here's a big jump. Whoa. Whew. My feet actually shifted forward on that one. We need to, uh, see I didn't, I didn't have my legs pinned against the shell, which is not good when you're jumping off a curb. That's the kind of stuff that'll happen. So guys, my feeling on the uh, monster seat in the V11 is it's, at best, it's marginally passable, at least for someone of my height. I think if you were shorter, it might work out a lot better for you, but for someone my height, it's, uh, it's not, it's definitely not a permanent solution, let's put it that way. I just got a message from Cindy that my fence extensions have arrived. It's crazy, they came via FedEx on a Sunday. FedEx never delivers on Sundays. I'm not sure what kind of uh, shipping service or what, what FedEx flavor this was that they actually deliver on a Sunday, but uh, it has been delivered. It was like almost 200 pounds of stuff. So, like I said, not sure if I'm gonna dig into that today or not. Maybe a little bit, we'll see. I have, I have so much to do, guys, it's crazy. All right, the sky is very threatening over there. Luckily, I have to go that way, but it's kind of threatening over there, too. <laughs> we might be getting wet, seriously wet. All right, just got a nice crack of thunder to that side of me. Luckily, I'm going this way, but I have a feeling that this is going to become a race against precipitation. I can now smell the rain, which means it's very close, probably over there. And Cindy uh, just texted me and told me that it's raining at the house as well. So uh, I think I better just stop whining and uh, prepare to get wet. Yep, I see the wall of rain ahead of me. So we're going to get to test the uh, V11 IPS rating. That's great, right? Two tests for the price of one. Sorry, I meant IP rating, not IPS, IP rating. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that is a measure of a vehicle's water resistance. And I believe the uh, V11 has an IP rating of 55, I think. Thought you guys might want to see the mud guard in action. I can hear it working at least. So now the one thing you have to be very careful about down here, when it rains, these lane lines are like a, they're, they look like pink, but they're actually almost like plastic. And when they get wet, they are like an ice rink. So if I am going to cross one, I need to do it very quickly. If I would like try to ride on that, uh, it, would, it would be a bad time for sure. I can't see, but it feels like I'm getting wet on my back. I don't know. We'll review the footage to see what's going on, but I feel, I feel stuff like on the back of my arms. And yeah, my shirt like right here feels wet too. Yeah, even though it's not raining right this second, it evidently rained very recently. The road is soaked here. The 
You see those skies behind me? Very, very dark. Very bad. It's going to be interesting to see where the where the problem is here with the mud guard that it's not blocking more. Because I, I can definitely feel it hitting the back of my legs, the water. Because it, it, at least uh, from a first glance, it seemed pretty substantial, the mud guard. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I thought that dead coyote was right around here somewhere. I don't see it. I wonder if someone came up and picked it up. I was almost sure it was in this fenced area, but maybe not. Huh. Well, the road may be soaked, but at least it's not raining on me. So look at the bright side. But my feet are burning. That's usually a constant on uh, range test for me. It is now beginning to rain. I jinxed myself. Oh boy. Oh wait, is this where the... Oh, maybe right, oh, right here is where it is. Yeah. Right there is the coyote. Poor thing. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Currently uh, 27 and a half miles into the, uh, into the ride. Definitely have a tailwind going this direction, so it should help the rain a little, or the range a little bit. Not sure how the rain will affect the range. Just past Everglades Boulevard, meaning we have approximately five miles remaining. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's a fast five miles. I'm wet and I'm hungry. I did this before eating my lunch, which may have been a mistake in retrospect. All right, we're on the home stretch, back on Mockley Road, and the, uh, the rain has resumed. Oh boy, good, and oh, all right. Uh, this is no longer rain right now. This is a borderline downpour. Awesome. Yep. Wheel still works at least, right? Still working. Oh my God, guys. I don't think I've ever ridden with this much standing water on the road. I am pretty sure that's an accurate statement. I'm nervous about getting over to the side because it's even it's even um, higher by the side of the road. Uh, you know, we don't want a hydroplane when you're on a one-wheel device, right? All right. Okay, well, it, it at least stopped uh, raining for the last uh, three quarters of a mile here. Almost home. Almost time to dry off. Fence supplies. That is one wet wheel, guys. About as wet as you're gonna get in the UC. Okay, guys, well that turned into uh, a little bit more than I bargained for. I was not expecting to get soaked like that. I'm looking at that mud garden, just wondering why I was feeling so much water. I guess, huh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to watch the video back to see where the water was actually bypassing the mud, the mud guard. This thing is freaking soaked. Man, oh man. So the on-screen display, the on-screen display only shows one bar right now. The total distance um, was 35.34 miles. The battery shows 24%. So, if we extrapolate, now this was further than when I did the range test before. Last time I did the range test, it was like 33 and a half miles. Now this is 35.34 miles, so it's almost two miles further. But the battery numbers, um, you know, 24% battery remaining after 35.34 miles. So I mean, you, you, you'd be able to get 40 miles out of this wheel. I never had any speed limiting. I kept my speed 20 miles an hour pretty, pretty uh, religiously the entire time. 
And let's see what the battery voltage is. So 24% is translating to 70.4 volts. I'm not sure, because I was told originally with my um, range test on the pre-production model that with the production model, it was going to allow you to go deeper into the pack. And I subsequently should see a higher amount of battery remaining. Um, to me, these numbers seem very similar and, and maybe slightly slightly less than, than what I saw with the pre-production wheel. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to go back and rever uh, review those voltages um, to see how they translate, but not the dramatic difference that I was expecting. I had, I had Revo uh, on my live stream who got a production V11 said, he said that he did 30 miles of rough, uh, of mostly off-road riding and he said he had 66% battery left. So I, I'm not sure where the disconnect is here, guys, because the mileage that I just saw on that range test is pretty uh, pretty average, I would say. That's, I guess that's a word that I would use for it. So, all right, well, I gotta go dry off, eat lunch. Uh, you guys can chew on this and uh, we'll, we'll see if we get any sort of uh, more information from the community about it, about those numbers. But we are currently showing 24%. Let's, let's take a... Um, screenshot of that we'll, we'll include that we'll include that in the video so it was an interesting ride huh if you found this ride interesting or at least i thought it was interesting uh please give us a big thumbs up if this is your first time visiting the channel you can always think about uh subscribing and the subscribe the subscribe bell or the subscribe button is on your screen and if you want to be notified of all future uploads you can hit the notify bell which is over there Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. What did you think of those numbers? Um, much like the pre-production wheel, they're fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's more range than, uh, than, than I would typically need, but not quite as much as I expected, to be quite honest. So, And uh, leave your feelings below. That's all I have for now. Hope the remainder of your weekend is good. And until next time, Duffman out. Hello. Like, can we get in the truck and go get them? Here, I'll take whatever. Okay. Hi, girls. <laughs> Wheels fine, just very wet. Hi, babies. I'm filming you. <laughs> You're filming it? Hi, <laughs> baby. That just means it's recording. Look how wet that thing is. I mean, it, it was an absolute downpour at certain spots. Daddy soaked 35.34 miles. It was good. My sneakers are squishy. Mm -hmm. Mileage, is, I think my mileage is probably similar to last time though, not, not much different. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, V11, time to dry out.